Hello, my name is Elon. I'm a high school student in California. This is a video about how I designed and built this electric recumbent bike with my dad. We first started by designing the bike, and there were a variety of initial designs, uh, ranging from these really long bikes to um, even trikes, and bikes with suspension, bikes without suspension. Uh, but we eventually settled on this design, which is what we ended up building with slight modification. Uh, we decided that it would be too hard to build and design our own front fork and rear triangle, so we ended up buying a bike from Walmart which um, included both of those parts. We cut it up and ended up using those parts. I'll go into that in more detail later. Uh, but the everything in between will be built by us. So the wheel we already had from a previous project, it has a hub motor, uh, the front wheel we bought off Amazon. This tube in between, this is the part that we made. So we cut up the frame, welded this tube in between to here, and then put this back support. Uh, and then everything else on the bike is also made by us, such as the seat, uh, the electronics. This is the bike we bought to, for, to use for the front fork and the rear triangle. It's just a really cheap Walmart bike. I would never recommend this bike for actually riding, but for parts, it's just fine. Uh, we didn't end up using these wheels because, as you can see, they have this weird yellow surface which is not flat, and you need a flat surface for the brakes to work on. We bought the bike and started taking it apart. Uh, we took apart basically the whole bike. Uh, here's that front brake mount. We ended up using the headset that came with it, which made it a lot easier to do the, um, the building. We also ended up using the handlebars that came with it, because they were already in the right shape we needed. Instead of having them up, like on this bike, we just angled them 90 degrees down so that uh, they would come back towards the seat. We cut off the handlebar grips because we would be using a hand grip throttle to control the electric motor. There's the rear brake mount, which again, it didn't come with a rear brake, but we assumed that it was for a higher end model. So we took out the crank, all those bearings, and we didn't end up using this uh, bottom bracket for anything, it just is still there. Uh, although it was very important for welding, we welded um, one of the main frame components, frame tubes to it. Uh, now this, the seat clamp came with a quick release lever, which we um, ended up using for the handlebars, uh, the stem that holds down the handlebars. I'll show that later in the video. Uh, the seat clamp was welded on, which was kind of annoying, but we ended up cutting off everything above these um, seat stays anyway. Now here's the frame um, almost completely disassembled. Now here's the um, design we settled on eventually. Uh, just kind of laid out to get, see what it would feel like in person. And it actually ended up working out really nicely. Here's the frame before we started cutting it up. Uh, we cut it up with an angle grinder. And here you can see it um, cut in half. We also ended up cutting the tubes off of the headset. We then uh, ground them down with the bench grinder just to make them smooth so that we could weld on them. Now I laid out the um, disassembled bike components roughly where they would be when the bike was built. Here's the cut tubes before we welded them. Uh, there would eventually be a support member right here, which would also be the seat back. Uh, this is 2x1 tubing with 14 gauge wall. And the wheelbase is about 4 feet. Actually, I think it's almost exactly 4 feet. So we just cut the tubes on the chop saw and notched them on the angle grinder because we... or the bench grinder, sorry, because uh, we don't have a tube notcher. And now this one, which would end up being welded to the bottom bracket, uh, we I ground very badly because the heat from the grinder melted or burned off the sharpie that was um, showing me where I needed to grind to, but it worked out fine. We tacked the frame together and then welded it. Now here's that uh, bottom joint on the frame. It's also welded up here at the head tube. And then we had to make a jig to hold everything together for welding the back section.
Now, after everything was welded together, we cut the kickstand just so that it would work at this um, uh, lower height. And here's my dad riding right around the parking garage of the shop. Uh, even without that rear support member, which would end up being the seat back, it was still very strong. Here's the rear support member, which would end up being the seat back. Uh, we just cut it out of some scrap one by one tubing. Uh, ground down some of the welds. So we welded in that uh, support member, notched it up here at the top, and then made these tabs out of, um, I think it was one by one angle. Uh, just drilled a hole in them for the for where we would eventually attach the bolts to attach the seat. Now we took it apart and sent it to the paint shop. It came back really nicely. Uh, we got it in this sparkly red. We got the handlebars on the stem in this really nice dark gray color. Uh, overall, really happy with how the um, powder coating came out. So I um, cleaned and re-greased all the bearings for the headset, assembled it back together, put the kickstand back on and the wheels, uh, and then I put the handlebars on. There's that quick release lever I was talking about, so you could easily convert it from this low recumbent bike position up into a scooter-like position. And I installed the front brake caliper, which went on just fine. I installed the front and rear brake levers and the throttle as well as the um, grip that came with the throttle for the other side. Here's the front brake. It went in really nicely. It was just this $20 brake set from Amazon. Uh, long reach brakes because of um, some, some misalignment from the Walmart bike. Now you can see just how long these brake calipers are. On any normal brake calipers, the brake pads, which are these, would be up about here, but um, just because of how the fork was built, uh, we need these extra long reach ones. Now for the rear brake I had to print a spacer because if you put it on top where it was supposed to be mounted it doesn't reach and if you put it on the bottom it didn't clear the um, seat stay tubes. So I made these spacers that you just slide on like this and then put the brake caliper up and screw on the nut and it worked it cleared, but because of the increased leverage from uh, the distance the brake caliper had from this mounting flange, it bent this a lot when braking. Just even under very light braking, it bent it. My solution to this problem was to use, just use zip ties. Uh, I would rather not use zip ties, but it was what worked. Uh, so rather than putting all the stress of braking on that uh, little mounting flange, you put it on the frame, which is very heavy and very well built, so it's not a problem at all. Now the throttle and brake cables I just zip tied together and then made these really just not very professional looking uh, zip tie cable guides. Um, I would like to 3D print a little cable guide that I would glue on uh, in the future. The frame had this tab on it which was used for a chain guard, but I used it to attach the um, cable that went to the motor. I cut out a seat out of cardboard and just bolted it in to see how it felt and it was actually surprisingly comfortable. I traced them out onto a piece of wood, cut them with a jigsaw, I drilled the holes for the bolts and put them on the bike and it still fit nicely. I spray painted one side of the seat backs black and with the other side we took foam and some vinyl fabric, uh, compressed it and then stapled it on and it became a comfortable seat. Here's the seat, it's padded, it's it's definitely not the most comfortable seat, but it works well and it absorbs a lot of the impacts of the road. These are BMX foot pegs, we use them as foot rests. They're attached to the front wheel and they also act as nuts, which hold on the front wheel. I made these mounts for the motor controller, which just zip tie onto the seat tube. For the power, my dad had a bunch of these uh, LiPo batteries left over from an old project. They were all two cell batteries which is 7.4 volts or uh, approximately eight when eight or eight and a half when fully charged so we used six of these in series to power the whole bike we made a wiring harness just with these solder um, heat shrink connectors 
those all eventually joined up with this SAE connector, which is what the um, motor controller needs, takes as input. So with the motor controller, I soldered this um, connector to the throttle, and then I also soldered the other side of that connector to the cable coming out of the motor controller, so that you could easily disconnect and connect the throttle. I needed a way to mount the batteries, so I came up with these um, just simple battery holders and open SCAD made this very simple design. Uh, holds three batteries on each side for a total of six. I 3D printed two of these and uh, the batteries ended up fitting very nicely, almost perfectly. I would be using this aluminum rod to keep them down and it would just be held down with a rubber band. I took a black piece of wood and just screwed them both into the wood. Then I stapled on our um, wiring harness to the bottom of the wood. So this is basically how the batteries are installed. Uh, you take off the aluminum rod, just put it aside. You put in each battery one by one, plug them in underneath to that wiring harness, which I showed before is stapled on underneath. You do that for all six batteries. Once you get all of the batteries uh, plugged in and installed, you can attach the aluminum rod, which keeps them from falling out. It fits into a slot at each end. I cut it just based on how I attached the uh, the battery holders. It gets held on with a rubber band. That's why I left that little bit of wood sticking out of this side. And just like that, the batteries are in and they're not going anywhere. Here's what is basically the final product. We ended up ha attaching a safety flag because of how low it is. It's hard to see if you're not as low as it is. Here you can see the, the key switch that originally came with the uh, motor controller. I just didn't get that in good detail because I didn't include it in the original wiring harness. Here you can see the black piece of wood with all the batteries on it. Here's the seat that we made. I 3D printed a little cap to go in the seat tube. Uh, this So this might be illegal to drive, but that's not really the point. It's just that it was a fun project uh, to practice our skills and design and build something. Uh, we both had a great time doing it. It took a long time because I had school and we were traveling during the summer, which was when I built it mostly. Uh, but I ended up building it. It was still very fun. I had a good time doing it.